They got it put in place around 9.30 Eastern time last night, uh, tested it out, and then the countdown resumed uh, around midnight. Can you recall a time when this kind of thing happened before on a launch and, and pushed the, the, the time back? Oh, yeah, in the, uh, in the earlier days, before we, really before we got to, uh, to Saturn and the Apollo, uh, this was a fairly frequent uh, occurrence, uh, certainly through the Mercury days, all the, the days of the one-man, really, capsule, the telephone booth, the flying telephone booth. Uh, those were, uh, those days were just beset by, by these problems. And then uh, in Gemini, uh, the, the two, first two-man, uh, capsule. Uh, we had several of this kind, uh, even replacement parts. I'm, I would have to check with Leo, who's a lot, uh, a lot uh, more uh, current on these things than I, but uh, there was one. Uh, I know where we flew a part in, uh, or they flew a part in, uh, uh, much the same fashion as they did this time. I think it's interesting that they're, that they're scavenging a and, and still uh, incomplete uh, vehicle in order to make this one go. Uh, that they had to go into that vehicle to get a box. And when we speak of the vehicle, it's worth reminding ourselves uh, that what we have here, I'm not sure NASA likes it to be called that, uh, is a space truck. It's a reusable space vehicle. We're in the very early and experimental stages, and as complicated, as sophisticated as uh, these spacecraft are, uh, the wonder to me is that they ever get it up and that they don't have to do this more often than they do because so many things have to work right. Well, uh, and, and of course, a great deal of the problem is this, uh, this extreme safety factor. Everything is redundant in these uh, spacecraft. That is, uh, every system's got a backup system, uh, and all of these backup systems have to be w functioning perfectly. I suspect that if you, when you went out to your garage in the morning, you had a check system for your automobile uh, before you could drive it out of that garage that's anything like what they have here, you'd never get out of the garage. <laughs> Uh, as, as good a vehicle as we build these days, uh, uh, is built these days, as in reliability of an automobile. The car is not going to break down on the highway. It very seldom has, uh, in your case probably, or mine. Uh, but uh, that would be the case. You just wouldn't get out of that garage. Uh, good point. That, uh, the, the last time, you know, when the shot was scrubbed last week, it was uh, a case, one doesn't want to oversimplify, but it was a case of uh, needing an oil filter change. Um, most of us, even those who were raised in an environment in which your father taught you maintenance is the most important thing about anything mechanical, you may or may not change your oil filter. You don't lift the hood every day of your automobile. But when you have two lives at stake, when you want to go as far as a spacecraft uh, wants to go, that when your machinery indicates that it needs a new filter change, um, which is what happened last week, isn't it? Somebody yep. says, well, let's take a look. You know, this is a kind of wonderful thing about us Americans, and, and I like it. Uh, we, uh, first of all, have this exceedingly high value that we place on human life. Uh, second of all, we do have a built-in kind of American feeling about maintenance and equipment working right. And I think this, that's something that is almost unique to us. Uh, maybe not quite unique. Maybe you could pick some other areas, but uh, in, in the mass around the world, uh, this is something you don't see other places. And it's one of the reasons why our defense structure is as expensive as it is. Uh, there are a lot of other reasons why it's as expensive <laughs> as it is, including a lot of uh, cost overruns, inefficiency, and things like that. But, but in the area of, of the uh, uh, highly technical uh, ma uh, machines we build, aircraft, tanks, and so forth, we build them with a lot of safety features, built-in redundancy features, things of that kind that other uh, countries don't demand. Even, in fact, our aircraft manufacturers make aircraft for other countries that aren't, don't have nearly the uh, sophisticated safety kind of built-in requirements that we have. Well, very good point again. It, they're built to last. We know the Soviet Union uh, last year had a, a hundred launches. They've been averaging two launches a week, but one reason is because the equipment they put up into space doesn't last very long. Yeah. And, and it, it doesn't probably have anything like the sophistication ours has uh, in, in this, in particularly this redundancy area. Walter, I'm awfully glad you're back with us again this morning. We'll be talking as the morning goes along, and CBS News coverage of the space shuttle launch will continue in a moment.
Jack Moon over launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center, and the voice of NASA is up. Let's take a listen. During the past few minutes, the liquid hydrogen duar, which is on the fixed service structure that's used for filling the tanks on the orbiter for the fuel cells, has been dumped to the burn pond. And this is a process which the residual hydrogen which left in that tank uh, is vented to prepare it for the launch so that it is not in any danger at that time. The hydrogen is vented through the hydrogen burn palm where it is bubbled through the water and ignited. All of the events in the countdown looking towards the launch at 10 a.m. this morning have been going very, very smoothly up to the present time. The crew is still in the breakfast room, uh, waiting the word that it's time for them to proceed to the suiting room, where they'll be suited up for their trip out to the pad and into space. The countdown clock continuing at T minus two hours, 19 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. This is shuttle launch control. Well, a wonderful shot there, and Bill Linden, our director, if you could go back to that uh, shot uh, for just a moment uh, on the pad. You can see the orbiter in slightly off to the left of center in the bottom uh, part of your screen. The large external fuel tank, uh, this tie-in of which is where the orbiter is located, is the, the largest, most dominant thing in the picture. And off to the side, those two uh, solid fuel rockets that help get it off the pad. And Leo Krupp, we can see just a little bit of what appears to be uh, vapor at the top of the external uh, fuel tank. Is that indeed vapor? Uh, yeah, I think that's just normal venting that they have. We want to get on with other things, but what a sight out there on the pad this morning. It's such a clear uh, morning, still dark out there. The moon, you can't see the stars, just a, uh, a bank of stars all over it. It is an indescribable sight, and it... It is one of those occasions in which, as terrific as this television picture is, there's nothing like seeing it in person. That is, there is a, a, a special, at least for me, uh, magical feeling, I started to say eerie feeling, of being around this spaceship, particularly in this setting this morning. We won't have that sight uh, for very long because the sun will shortly be up, but I wanted to take a good look and just soak it in. I would suggest we just take a few seconds here uh, in the quiet and take a look at it and think about it. Now, a short time ago, the crew had the very traditional pre-launch breakfast, but there was uh, a new twist today, a birthday celebration for 44-year-old pilot Richard Truman. That's truly joking around under the happy birthday sign with the flight commander, Joe Engel, at his left. A little gaiety there this morning. At, uh, they're eating with some of the other astronauts, among them John Young, who commanded the first flight of Columbia. Truly 44 years old today. And uh, I thought maybe we could have a little bit of that sound, but I don't think there is any sound on this particular videotape. Now, they, it's part of the, the candles, the kind of special candles on the cake. I hope he doesn't burn his hand there and knock himself out of the flight. <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> we can't see the candles uh, very well there, but there's special uh, flickering on and off uh, candles for Truly's 44th birthday. And uh, he was saying uh, late yesterday and again, again early this morning that uh, he was really eager to see the biggest birthday candle of all, and that uh, would be that flash and roar of the Space Shuttle Columbia off on its uh, second voyage uh, into space. Everybody hoping that it'll happen this morning, oh, about uh, three hours and 35 minutes uh, from now. 